Hello everyone and welcome to the Canadian political scene. What a week it's been in Canadian politics. Today we will look at the updates in the Duffy Affair. When does a government decide it's time to become accountable? After 10 years? After they've proven just how reckless they can be with our money? Maybe it's when Canadians, for good reason, begin to question their accountability. I believe that when a government has to decide to become accountable, it's time to demand a higher standard of government. It's time to demand better. My name is Stephen Harper. Demand better. Vote for the new Conservatives. Do you remember that? That was Stephen Harper's promise in 2004. It's part of a long list of accountability promises he's given, like this one in 2005. There will be a new code on Parliament Hill. Bend the rules, you will be punished. Break the law, you will be charged. Abuse the public trust, you will go to prison. If you behave unethically or dishonestly, then do not expect a reward from this Prime Minister of Canada. Well, that was Stephen Harper in 2005 telling Canadians that he was going to bring accountable government. And this is what escalated from a Senate spending scandal to what seems to be a conspiracy to cover something up. News has obtained a confidential report that shows how a conservative-dominated Senate committee sanitized damning findings against Duffy. The original version was much tougher on the key issue of Duffy's primary residence. It said Duffy mostly used the cottage in PEI during the summer months. His pattern of air travel showed he lived in Ottawa. Moreover, he registered his Ottawa address for several official purposes. In sharp contrast to the final report Canadians heard, the original states the living allowance rules are very clear and unambiguous, and Duffy broke them. Finally, the report reveals Duffy's lawyer sought to have him exempted from a forensic audit. All of this was missing from the rewritten report tabled in the Senate. You wonder, what is it that uh, Mike Duffy, you know, had that he could uh, get the chief of staff to the prime minister and the prime minister's office to do a secret deal? Now that is the million dollar question, folks. What exactly happened? Why did Duffy get an easygoing uh, affair and $90,000 bailout. Well, Duffy has since resigned, and along with him is Pamela Whelan, another conservative senator, and former chief of staff, Nigel Wright. Now, I do remember a time when Duffy was honorable, don't you? Because we didn't believe taxpayers should have to pay the cost, and Mr. Duffy was not in a position to pay them himself. So what we have here is that Nigel Wright uh, did an exceptionally honorable thing. He reached in to his own resources, wrote a personal check out of his own bank account to cover the costs of these in, in, uh, ineligible expenses uh, and to protect taxpayers. And apparently he was a leader too, according to Peter Van Loan, the House leader for the Conservatives. Oh dear. You look at the current events and you just shake your head. In fact, it's funny that the tough on crime Prime Minister absolutely needed the NDP opposition to call in the RCMP for him. Now, Stephen Harper is famous for his control over his government and his MPs, and we're expected to believe that he was completely unaware that his chief of staff was negotiating a secret deal to pay off Mr. Duffy in exchange for the conservative-dominated Senate to, quote, go easy on Mr. Duffy in a Senate committee report. A secret cash payment to a public figure is a very, very serious allegation. The fact that this payment was made out of the Prime Minister's office demands accountability. These actions are not only troubling, but they may violate the very laws that the RCMP is charged with upholding and enforcing. So today, I have taken the steps of writing to RCMP Commissioner Robert Polson and request that the RCMP investigate this matter promptly and take all appropriate action. Canadians deserve the truth, 
something they have not gotten yet from Prime Minister Stephen Harper and his Conservatives. And on Tuesday, May 21st, for the first time in over a week since the scandal began, Stephen rose to the occasion to open the doors of his caucus meeting for the first time to tell Canadians that his government has a very good track record. In the meantime, he dodged the entire affair completely, but I don't need to say anything. I can just show you the main clips from the speech. We've worked hard collectively as a party, as a caucus, and as a government to dramatically strengthen accountability rules in Ottawa and to apply those standards to ourselves. I need not remind you that in 2006, this government was first elected to clean up the Liberal sponsorship scandal to ensure the rules are followed and to ensure there are consequences when they are not. Since that time, we have taken unprecedented measures to achieve that end. We have strengthened the powers of the Auditor General, toughened the office of the Ethics Commissioner, reformed political party financing, dramatically tightened lobbying rules, and beefed up auditing and accountability within government departments. Canada now has one of the most accountable and transparent systems of governance in the entire world, and this is something Canadians are rightly proud of. It is also something, colleagues, that we can never take for granted. Because as I said, in fact, as I said in the room across the hall, in the fall of 2005, when we first pledged to bring in the Federal Accountability Act, I said this, no government will be perfect because none of us are perfect. We cannot dream a system so perfect that no one will have to be good. Just as we continue to toughen rules, we must also uphold a culture of accountability. And I know that the people in this room have. We have reduced our budgets and travel as a government. We are the caucus that finally bit the bullet and reformed the MP pension plan so that we will pay our fair share. Anyone who wants to use public office for their own benefit should make other plans or better yet, leave this room. We have an active and important agenda on the issues that matter to hardworking Canadian families and there is much work to be done. When distractions arise, as they inevitably will, we will deal with them firmly. But we cannot lose sight of our top priority. The world we are in remains a deeply uncertain... Canadians are looking to us to protect them, their jobs, their families, their communities. That is what we must be focused on and what we will continue to do. Continue to implement our economic action plan, continue to work on expanding trade, continue our focus on jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity, and continue to ensure that through all the ups and downs of the world economy, there remains no better place to be than this country. And you know a so government is transparent when they throw the media out after Harper's address. And don't answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Go, guys. See you in South America, guys. Okay, guys, let's go. Everybody out.
Cock caucus is starting. Watch your back. Watch the wire on the floor. Watch the wire on the floor. What's up, Peter? Just watch the wires. Yes, transparent. But see, Harper wasn't the only one who tried to remain silent on the issue until now. So did Mike Duffy. In fact, on May 17th, CTV reporters were taken off his property. With car in the driveway, the residents of this tidy Cavendish cottage are home. Clearly, though, they are not receiving visitors. Any debate of who lives here is settled by the sign in the yard. Moments after we walk away, a visitor of another sort. This at the request of Senator Duffy. The RCMP was called to have us removed. It is, after all, as the officer reminds us, private property. Our license plate and names are checked. After a few minutes wait... There's your ID back. The only thing I'll, uh, I'll say, guys, is the complaint was made that, that you were on the property, yeah. and the property owner doesn't want you on his property. Appreciate so the that. only thing I'll ask is if you just don't return within his property. The way that the Prime Minister has handled the issue has raised a lot of doubts because the common sense thing to do if you're a tough on crime prime minister that's innocent is I'm not going to let these people throw me under the bus I'm going to get an investigation they might be innocent they might be guilty but I didn't know anything about it and I believe that the public deserves to know what happened so let's call a public inquiry that's what an honorable prime minister with integrity would have done in this kind of situation but Mr. Harper hasn't said a word right now. Either it's a political blunder, or maybe there is something to hide. But really, that's up to the RCMP now to find out. As soon as, hopefully, they investigate the Duffy affair. So that now leaves the question to you. What do you think of Stephen Harper's integrity? That's a very straightforward question at this point. He campaigned on integrity. So what do you think of it? How has he handled the Duffy affair? What do you think of his governance? Has he been tough on the people who break crimes in his own government? It's a fair question. And now, if you like this video, I highly recommend you watch the others. Subscribe. Very painless action to do. Subscribe button is just there. And you'll get videos as they come out. Not everything that's released on the Canadian political scene, however, will be released to a video. So please do follow the Canadian political scene on Twitter for up-to-date uh, updates on Facebook and on Google+. So now that again leaves the question to you. Actually, this leaves another question. Do you, do you think Harper knew about it? Everyone is saying he didn't. Everyone's saying he didn't. But right now there's no facts on the table to say that he knew or he didn't know. Hmm. So what do you think? Is this a scandal that's been really badly mismanaged? Or is this a conspiracy to cover up something? And if so, what is he trying to cover up? Leave your comments in the, in the comment section below. Follow us on our social media.